Hello. Okay, so it is episode 16 of Troll Lord Games. In this particular pro... Troll Lord Games? Troll Lord Games, the Castle Keeper's Guide. In this, we are drawing 12 maps going from Thorpe Hamlet village all the way through town into a metropolis but we're also doing a keep we're doing a martin bailey all the way through to a mega castle 12 maps in all we are slowly hacking these through tonight is going to be working on inking the block which is the tower choice so we're doing a little bit of a cutaway i want before we get into this i want to thank all of my patreons for backing me i want to thank all of my subscribers here on twitch for supporting me it is truly appreciated every single dime goes back into the channel and it keeps just making it better and better and better so we will talk more of that a little bit later on because we're going to touch on the discord i think before then let's just talk about the little guy in the room here with us jack cole hi jack <laughs> Well, you're, you're Jack Cole, which I always think of Jackal or Mr. Cole. You have the best name ever. Everyone loves you. And Mondays from now on is going to be Alyssa and Jack. And we're just going to bullshit, okay? I'm going to map, but we're going to chat. We're going to hang. And we're just going to bullshit, okay? And I have a list of questions that we were working through last week. And we all found out a little bit about Jack, a little bit about me. And honestly, I've been with Jack for over 10 years now. And I learned some things. So we're going to continue this little exploration as we map. And when the questions are done, we're just going to keep on bullshitting about other things. So with that said, here at the start of the stream, I think last line um, or last time, I think we spoke about RPG archetypes. And we definitely we definitely covered that. Did we co uh, cover miniature line? Oh, we did because you did the Rackham. And we did Disney character, right? Yes. All right. So in that case, what we're going to do is Marvel character. Who's your favorite Marvel character? And why? You cut, wait, wait, what? Marlin's good, by the way. Thanks for bringing that up. So hold on a sec. Actually, Jackson, speak. Actually, yeah, so. No, because if I can hear you, they're meant to be able to hear me through this. So, okay, hold on a sec. Hold on a second. Thanks for bringing this up. We had no technical issues last time, but I have completely rewired my computer over the weekend. And you know what happens when you move USB cables around? So let's take a look at our audio here. Let's just see how it's set up. We've got audio input capture. That's me speaking right now. We've got audio output capture, which is doing nothing. Let's just, we are gonna link that to my game, Jack Talk. Hi, so we're doing a sound test now. Thank you to everybody who's uh, mentioned that. I um, bet you can hear him now, huh? If someone could confirm. 
yeah, I, I actually heard, I have the um, the stream running, so yes. Can All right. So that is pulling USB cables out and plugging them in and the computer going, I don't know even what device this is now. So it looks like we're back. Thank you, Marlins Girl and Mavernus, for pointing that out. We are talking favorite Marvel characters. Jack revealed that it is Deadpool, and he was talking about some of the older Deadpools and some of the dark side of Deadpool. Jack, rewind it 30 seconds. Tell us about your favorite character. By the way, everyone in the chat, we're just going to hang. We're going to chill. We're going to talk about different subject matters with Jack. It is going to spiral into different things. I invite you to participate. So I want to hear... Who's your favorite Marvel character and why? So Jack, pick it back up. So yeah, so I would probably say the, the easy answer is definitely Deadpool, um, but not the not no, almost not the the entirety of Deadpool. The the, the, the Ryan Reynolds uh, film version is, is is damn good and it's really funny. Um, but I actually wasn't a super fan of when I guess when he first started in the comics. It, it was. Um, it was like New Mutants or X Force. It was one of those when he, he when he first was introduced, and he was kind of a like a darker character. Yeah, he kind of had a little bit of humor, but it was like always dark humor. He was, you know, supposed to be like this, you know, um, kind of like you know antagonistic character to the to the heroes. And so I don't know. He 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 was never fun in my opinion in the beginning. And it wasn't it wasn't until they kind of revamped him. Um, and kind of made him his own thing and had him go solo that I really started to re enjoy them. I don't know when, I'm so terrible when it comes to comics, especially, um, you know, keeping up to date on them and knowing when stuff comes out because I always get them, you know, 5, 10, 15 years later as like a big collected series. And so, you know, I got, you know, when, when he started having his own individual run and it was way more comedic and he had like the, you know, from his perspective, you have his normal voice and he has like two other voices like in his head that talk to him all the time, which I was kind of sad that they didn't do for the film. But it, it just it just was it was such a fun story. And, 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 you know, it goes all over the place, like literally all over the place. At one point, he's destined to be like the hero of the universe. And it's like that's going to stop like an apocalyptic event. And it's like even he's we like, won. wait, me? have you met me? What the hell? <laughs> so, so it was, it was fun. A what? Uh, so he, he's probably the, the easy answer is probably him um even though i love him as a character if i was gonna go though marvel like mcu um like for this for like cinematic marvel i don't know if actually it would be deadpool i think it would probably lean more towards um uh rocket raccoon from the guardians of the galaxy rocket raccoon you know i, I wouldn't have even considered him yeah he's um i love i love the the, the film uh, the, the the screen version of Rocket is is I just find it's outstanding. And by the way, thanks, uh, King. Welcome, love to see you, man. Um, hey, GL, good to see you here as well. Thanks for hanging out, everyone tonight. Very much appreciated. All right, so we've got Deadpool, but beaten out by Rocket Raccoon. Never would only, have even thought about it. Only uh, for the screen. Only for, uh, only for the screen. Now that's fair. That's fair. What about DC character? I feel that's harder. Hold on, hang on. Before we do that, I know you're not like a big comic book person. Mm -mm. You've got to answer these questions too. So you've only, obviously only seen Marvel films. So who would be your who would be your number uh, one Marvel character? Oh man, I I don't know because I mean my influence has been purely from the films. And um Well and those are those are certainly valid choices. I mean, you know, you could say that, you know, I only have the knowledge from the film, so I like them for that. Can I pick can I pick um Groot? Can I pick Groot? Would that be fast? <laughs> yeah. Yes, Groot definitely works. Um that's 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 fantastic. Yeah, I think I would have to pick Groot, and I think I would have to pick, honestly, um like baby Groot. I, th I think that's the one I would have to do. Um, from Guardians 2, yeah. Yeah, from Guardians 2. That whole opening sequence with him, uh, like, dancing to music while everyone is just fighting that big, huge boss creature, that just, to this day, just cracked me up. I, I love that thing. It just, it slays me. Fun fact, uh, that Baby Group's dance movements are actually modeled after the director and writer James Gunn. You can actually see a behind-the-scenes shot of them filming him on a soundstage, uh, dancing around to to Mr. Blue Sky from the, the film, just dancing around crazy. And it was his dancing and movement that they put then the, the baby group dancing off of from that uh, from that intro sequence. It's it's actually a really funny video of James Gunn dancing around like a 
crazy person. <laughs> That's cool. I never knew that. I never knew that. All right. So we are going to do the next one. What about your favorite DC? Favorite DC character? Now, I must admit, I have not read a lot of DC comics. Um, and additionally, I have seen very few DC films. I, I can't say I haven't I've seen few DC films because I've seen what's out there. I, so I know what's out there. So I know, you know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, you know, The Flash. You know, I, I know that's pretty much my, my um, that, that's really my only knowledge. Um, so um, I, with that being said, you know, I, I probably have to do, I probably would have to do the Joker. Knowing full well. Joker, yeah, I forgot knowing, about him. Knowing full well that he is not a good person. He is a horrible person. He's a crazy psychopath, a sociopath, all the paths. He has them. Um, but I, I also think, and, and I'm not one of those like crazy people that like, like thinks he's so awesome and like he's so good it's like no no he this is somebody who has serious problems and is a great villain um and yes he can be entertaining and amusing but he is a murderer he is a crazy person but i think he's great because of that because there's nothing special going on with him it's just he's a genius and he's insane and that's it he has no superpowers i mean that's it it's just he just has his crazy twisted chaotic intellect um and he will beat you to death with a crowbar or shoot you in the face or blow you up with the bomb and that's kind of it you know he's he's not like he's like you know he's got you know any anything special going on other than that so i don't know i dig him i think that's a good choice i don't know if i could actually with all seriousness say anyone else instead of that um that's a solid choice right there all right hey brian it's good to see you my friend we're hanging out here with jack i'm glad that you could join us this evening i'm um, just um so everyone knows what i'm doing i'm beginning to ink in the block here and um this is not familiar waters to me to actually be doing a cutaway so you're definitely going to be seeing a little bit of you know draw redraw Draw, redraw going on tonight but we're gonna we're gonna give it a go like why why is this one so wonky compared to that one i don't know all of these questions are more answered next week all right so so you, you said you would do joker as well i would do joker is that the thunderdome it, it is the thunderdome and we're gonna have these two women and this bloke fight it out um, all right, so let, let's let's flip this around a little bit. So I like the, the blacksmith or the worker, the worker. Yeah, I might redraw him a little bit. It's a bit crude. I mean, the, the print size is this, so it's really small. Um, but I, I am going to add some extra details, I think, to these guys. I'm going to draw a cow and stuff in there. So I've got them there for scale. Like, I really love that guy with the amphora. Um, all right, I'm going to skip the comic character because you already really sort of answered that a little bit. Oh, no, did you? Favourite comic character. You've read a lot of comics that never made it into the movies and may even not be part of the DC or the Marvel Universe. Favourite comic character. Um, so favourite comic character. And Devin oh, Rue, thank you very much for the follow. That's really appreciated. And thank you for even being out there looking at your humble servants. We're hanging out with Jack, by the way. Jack, my husband, if you didn't know. Oh. We're talking We're talking comic books and stuff. Um, gosh, favorite comic book character in it could be anything. So, yeah, I, stepping away from Marvel and DC, you know, when I was younger and when I was... I had... I, 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 I don't... I, 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 I had a darker sense of humor um, when I was younger. And so when there were years ago, my answer would have been something like Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, um, which kind of like the Joker is not, he was not a, a quote unquote good guy. I mean, he literally, I mean, there's a reason why he was called Johnny the Homicidal Maniac is because he was a crazy person and he would kill people. Um, but I, I kind of think I've, I've kind of moved away from a little bit from that style of, of humor. Um, 
so if I was going to do a comic book character of anybody, that would be, oh, you know what? I've got to say, so there's this great comic um, book artist out of Croatia. His name is um, Stepan Sage, and he's he does amazing work and he's he's pretty active on facebook um and he used to post to like deviant art a lot but he's actually he pretty much posts like new stuff to like a patreon these days um but he's he's got a comic line called death vigil um which is it's the, uh, the it's kind of like um uh it's like a group of grim reapers there's the main grim reaper who's like the grim reaper um, and then she has like these this this group of other reapers that they they basically start stop like demons and entities, but they also, you know, uh, you know like are guardians of like the the undead like life force or thing. It's this whole thing thing. Anyways, um, there, there's a character from there. Yes, Brian knows him. Yes, Step on Sage, uh, Sage, I think that's how you say it. Um, um, but yes, there's a guy. There's a character. One of the reapers. His name is Sam. He's uh, known as the Grave Digger. Uh, his weapons are a spade and a pick. I actually have I actually have uh, a symbol on my phone of um, of um, uh, uh, his work, uh, and it's actually the symbol for uh, Sam the Grave Digger. I don't know if you can actually see that at all. Uh, anyways, you probably can't. Um, Anyways, um, it's it's great. It's it's a it's a it's a great comic, and I, I would probably say that it, it, we're talking about comic book character, right? Then yes, yeah, Sam Sam the Grave Digger from Death Vigil. Um, hello, Strega. Hello. Hey, Princess. Princess, I'm just inking in the tower tonight a little bit. Um, so while I'm doing this, Jack is joining us. Uh, Jack joins us every Monday now. So I'm going to be playing around with this, trying to just get a little bit of the black and white work in, and we're just talking about our hobby and all of the aspects of it. Uh, okay, next question. And Jack, I don't, I, I don't hear you talk about this type of thing very often. Favorite anime character? Uh, favorite anime character is um, by far uh, L from Death Note. Um, probably followed up with some of the other characters from Death Note, like Ryuk, the Shinigami. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, I gotta say, I, I don't, you know, obviously there's like the, the, the main character, Light, um, who you can root for or root against, depending on what you believe. But um, but yeah, L, L from Death Note is probably, is probably my number one favorite anime character. I gotta be honest with you, the whole uh, Death Note thing, you're the one that got me onto Death Note, and after watching it, I wish I had a Death Note. I like to think that the entire <laughs> world would be a much better place if I did. Um, a great show, an incredible show. Hey, well, and it's funny, if you think about it, if you think about it, L, not L, pardon me, Light, that's, um, he started off the same way. He started off making, um, trying to make the world a better place and taking out evildoers taking out bad people so it's one of those things where you know it could have um you know that that could be us who knows abusing the power becoming dark becoming evil we decide who's right and wrong but i agree i i i would like to believe that i would not um become evil and i would we'd probably become evil you know that right use it for the betterment yeah it's one of those you know absolute power corrupts absolutely yeah, exactly, exactly. And by the way, the magic, magnificent pecs. Oh, come on, the magnificent pecs. I was going to say thank you for the follow, but no. Just so everyone knows, pecs, by the way, is my social media guy. So I'm going to assume the magnificent pecs is him, and he's coming here to lurk. <laughs> it's that or it's a bot. Alright. I have to do. I have to do the voice because uh, Strega did shadows, but shadows. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that was the do 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 All right, so, and Alex Vixen, thank you for joining us this evening. It's very much appreciated. We're joined with Jack, as ever. He's going to be our Monday guest every Monday, and we're just talking DC characters, Marvel characters. We're talking comic book characters, and we're just moving through subjects, and we're just going to see where they go. Nerdy shenanigans. So, let me counter with you. we got to take a step back, because you you yourself have read 
comics and comic books, you skipped over yourself. What uh, what comic book character would you be your would you be your favorite? Which comic book character my favorite? Mm -hmm. I don't read that many comics. Should nerd again. That's exactly how it is. Um, well, you used to. We've yes. Had... Ooh, Constantine. Good choice, Max. Yeah, Constantine. That's a cracking one. You know, I never actually thought you'd be asking me questions. I'm completely ill-prepared to actually answer these damn things. But, hmm. If I was to put my thinking cap on... Oh, oh, you know what? Yeah, okay. I'm actually going to tap into the past when I used to read um, something called 2000 AD. And 2000 AD had some... Inc it would be like a little compilation of stories every Saturday. And you'd go to the store, you'd get the little comic, there'd maybe be six stories in there. Judge Dredd was in there. Judge Dredd is an incredible character, incredible, like, rich lore that they managed to build up over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of issues of 2000 AD. And I want to say some of my biggest influences and some of my biggest likes and some of my passion and yearning for drawing or black and white artwork actually came from these comics. And so I think I would actually point to a couple um i would point to um robo hunter sam slade and uh, but i would actually look at halo jones halo jones i think went for two or three seasons and they, they were just outstanding she was an incredible strong woman you know it, it it gave this entire story arc of her being on this sort of um I'm not going to say post-apocalyptic future, but this future on a planet where, you know, things are pretty dire. You know, it's one of those dire sort of bleak views of humanity where everyone's just eking out a living to her journey into the stars. And it was great. Halo Jones. That, that's right. that's what my answer would be for that. I, I kind of figured it would be either Halo Jones or, you know, like you said, Robo Hunter or strontium dog or even the one of the abc warriors i mean i i remember when you were telling me when you first were in you were you were the ones who introduced me into all of those characters and so i was like it's gotta be it's probably gonna be one of them. and, so and if i was gonna pick abc warriors though it would have to be the story arc as a whole because okay. there were so many characters there's like you know something like seven of these um robots and i always remember um as a kid opening up uh, this comic where they're introducing the robot wars and it's robot uh, and it's how humans fought against each other they eventually just had robots against robots uh, but these robots are kind of sentient and th th this incredible double page spread of just robots tearing each other fucking apart and I, I fell in love immediately and then someone, uh, uh, Simon Beasley got hold of the series at one point and Beasley uh, his artwork nowadays is like almost overdone, but back in the early times, like it, he was black and white artwork, and there were these little tiny vignettes of stories going on in every panel. Even if it was just a little tiny ruined robot in the background, he has nothing to do with the dialogue going on, and he's laying there, and there'll just be this little Ugh, coming out of his mouth, and it just made you want to hunt for the details that he would put in there. And I loved it. I loved it as a complete production, ABC Warriors, versus an individual. Gotcha, gotcha. So not not not, not one of them where you were like, oh, he's so the best, or that one's the best. It's... Well, no, because there, there were some tropes in there. You know, uh, Hammerstein, the leader, he was more like your crusader type. There was, um, you, you know, Joe Pineapples, and he was like the assassin and the, 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 the sniper. But I'm not sure any individual on his own shone with so much personality that I'd go, oh, him. It was it was more a collective of all of them, you know? Right, right. I, um, again, I have to, th I have to thank you for, um, for introducing me to, um, to the ABC, to, to all of those. And, you know, I think out of all of them, for me personally, I think the ABC Warriors was probably my favorite out of all of them. Did you read them? I read the, those the, those first two volumes that you have. Um, I read those uh, because when you were telling me about them and then I acquired them for you and I was like, here, you read them and then you were like, you should read these. And then I read them. So. I forgot that you read them. Princess yeah. wants a quick recap, by the way, on your Marvel and DC, if you just want to recap them. 
Oh yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So she's got Wolverine and Power Girl. Mine are um, uh, hello War Gaming Recon. Oh War Gaming Recon. Hey Jonathan, how are you? Um, okay, so let's see. Marvel would be Deadpool um, for his more comedic run in the comics, and also the screen version is pretty good with Ryan Reynolds. Um, and then for DC, it is um, the Joker, um, uh, knowing full well that he is a despicable, horrible person. But I, I like the fact that he's his crazy, chaotic intellect is really his only weapon. Um, well, yeah, aside from, you know, knives and guns and bombs. But those, those would be my two uh, for Marvel and DC. So Wargaming Recon, and for anyone that's just joined, uh, by the way, thank you for joining, just hanging out with us this evening. It's really, really appreciated. I'm just chilling here, drawing, and Jack and I are talking all things geeky and nerdy. Um, Wargames Recon. This is a project for Troll Lord Games. It is a series of 12 maps going from a hamlet through to a th no sorry a thorpe through to a hamlet through to a village that's what we're drawing right here all with crazy crazy detail and we're gonna go up into a metropolis with everything in between so we'll have the town we'll have a fortified town We'll have a city, then we'll get up to the metropolis. But we're also going to do a tower, a modern bailey, a fortified military camp, a castle, and a mega castle. They don't call it a mega castle. They call it a greater castle. So it's 12 maps in all, and I'm doing them on one canvas. They're going to have them separated across, obviously, across the book, and I'll have, like, a little panel of text and descriptions and maybe even NPCs and everything. And then, But I'm doing it this way because... What a sexy freaking poster this will make. So this is what we're doing. And we're motoring along. The level of detail, by the way, that I'm putting into these maps is kind of ridiculous. But why not? If it's going to be printed as a poster, let's, let's get ridiculous with this type of thing, right? Let's draw the planks on the roofs and the nails in the planks. That's literally what we've been doing. And right now, I'm doing a um, tower. And we decided to make it a block, which is a type of tower. And I'm currently taking my sketch and I'm inking it in. And it's a cutaway. It's going to be the only cutaway on this entire map. Because a tower from above, no matter what you do with the roof, is going to be pretty boring. So a cutaway, super sexy. We'll have little people inside. We'll have a little fireplace. We'll have some cattle on the ground floor. It's going to be super sex. So that's what we're working on, my friend. And I've just started the inking process tonight. And it's probably going to be two or three streams. This week, we'll finish the block. Uh, and Wargaming, welcome, zombie. <clears throat> Wargaming Recon did actually ask as well, uh, what helps you more subscriptions or bits for, um, for the stream? Oh, that's a... So thank you very much for even considering it. Subscriptions, actually, um, would be very appreciated. Even if you just subscribe for one month. Uh, just so everyone knows... We will actually be launching our Discord channel next Monday. And anyone who is subscribed to us here on Twitch or on Patreon will have private access 24-7. And Pex has done a great job of setting it up. It will, not only will you get exclusive content over there, exclusive videos, you get to hang out. And I have Discord open like all day, okay? We get to chill. We'll hang out together. Um, so, in, in answer to your question, Strega, about the the Flash TV show, or as, as Pex points out, the Arrowverse, uh, like the Berlanti um, t television shows, um, the um, I got you, girl. I got you. I saw it. I was just, you know, I was just, I was just, I was holding off. I was holding off. Um, I, I used to watch the show um, a while ago, but it got kind of um, stale for me, um, and it got kind of. I don't know. I wasn't a big fan of it. I liked the crossover episodes where all of the, you know, all of the different shows would come together. Even though I didn't watch any of those other shows, I really pretty much exclusively watched The Flash. Um, but then I got more interested in um, the Legends of Tomorrow show. So I actually pretty much, I pretty much dropped off of, um, dropped off of The Flash and watched Legends of Tomorrow. But even that started to get kind of, uh, just kind of started to get kind of old. So. 
I don't at the moment I don't watch any of those uh, DC TV shows. I DC is one of those things where I'm glad they've had so much success in those um, um, in those um, in the in the television because their 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 cinematic stuff hasn't done as well for them, um, which is unfortunate. Um, but um, but yeah, so that's that's what that is. What gave me come by the way? Loves your background. Everyone loves your background, Thanks. man. Yeah, this was um, when when obviously when 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 COVID happened or when COVID happened, like it's not still going on. When when the quarantine first started happening because of COVID, um, StarWars.com actually released a whole bunch of Zoom backgrounds for free. Just they were just like, here, these are fun little Star Wars backgrounds you can use in Zoom or any other type of streaming, um, app, you know, app you use for your meetings. And so this is from um, the you know sequel trilogy. This is in one of the Resistance bases. Um, I forget which one. Um, it might be Crate from the second film, The End of the Last Jedi. But yeah, yeah. Princess, love the Marvel movies, not the TV shows, but DC prefers the TV shows over the movies. Yeah, that's that seems I to think be that's the fair. way of it. That seems to be the way of it. Although, that being said, the Netflix Marvel shows, in my opinion, have been outstanding. The Jessica Jones, Daredevil... The Punisher, uh, Luke Cage. The, the first season got kind of weak, but in my opinion, the second season was outstanding. Um, and then um, the the Defenders or uh, Iron uh, Iron Iron Fist, not so much, not so much on Iron Fist. I tried, I tried, um, I, tr I really tried getting an Iron Fist, and I just, I just couldn't. Oh shit! Things just moved. Yeah, Daredevil definitely was amazing. By the way, War Games Recon, thank you so much for the. Uh, the sub that is really 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 appreciated all right so jack you're gonna love this one um jack by the way just so everyone has some context here jack is a huge star wars fan uh not not to the point of being like you know a fanboy so much uh, he can be critical but uh, he is your true fan he knows a lot. Now, he's not going off to Vegas doing competitions and trivia quizzes, but he knows a lot. And so this next question is going to be pertinent. Jack, mm -hmm. who is your favorite... Uh, or, I say, I, I, let's say, which is your favorite? Star Trek or Star Wars? And why? Well, it's one of those things where I know that there, in the past, there was a lot of um, animosity between... You know star trek lovers and star wars lovers kind of like there's kind of is now where it's like dc and marvel i'm i'm definitely in the camp of why can't you like all of it you know what's i'm why, why do we need to put ourselves in these like these different groups and like battle each other because of it like i like star trek you get star wars nerds get out of here you know it's like uh so but but if i had to pick um, if I if it was like gun to my head had to pick uh, it, it would have to go Star Wars and I know that these days it's very problematic um, with everything that's gone on with with the prequels and the, and the sequel trilogy and the behind the scenes stuff as far as Disney as a company and LucasArts as a company that's you know that that is what it is I can't help it and I love I love Star Wars more out of the two not but I love Star Trek as well, so it's it's always kind of funny that it's like a why do I have to have both like either? I want both. They're so they're both so good. Yeah, you but, could do both, right? You could you'd if, be a fan of both. But if I had to do a Thanos snap and one of them's gone forever, sadly, Trek's got to go. So, so yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's got to be because the um um ah uh, thank you, Brian. Ryan, thank you. I tried liking Deep Space Nine. I could not. I couldn't. I couldn't get into it. And there's so many people that are like, and war gaming recons in that group where they're like, the Deep Space Nine is so good. I I couldn't. I couldn't get into it. I for some reason. I just. I don't know what it was. I think I might have been spoiled because of Babylon Five, and I think they did the bet. They they had a better story as far as like the whole space station goes with all of the different. You know cultures and races and groups coming together i i felt it was and supposedly and I, I i we actually have a friend who uh i guess knew the guy who created 
Deep Space Nine, and he was actually friends with somebody or something, and I guess they had a falling out, and like the one guy went on to do Babylon Five, and then the other guy went and did Deep Space Nine, which was almost like a blatant ripoff of Babylon Five, and so it was like they created this big rift between the two of them, and they like not friends at all. But yeah, it's like it's like I wanted to like Deep Space Nine because it's Star Trek. Star Trek's freaking awesome, but I I just I just couldn't get into it. I just couldn't get into it. You do, uh, Strega. You do the B- Babylon Five. Getting those on DVD, it's your, you just you'll pop them in at any time. That'd be the way to go. Babylon Five was freaking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I think we skipped past any level of controversy on that one. Well done, Jack, for your diplomacy. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like it's, it. Again, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I don't, I don't like the fact that, I mean, it's like, we're all, we're all nerds together. Why do we have to, you know, cre- create our little tribes and battle each other by battle it out? I mean, you know. No, that's fair. That That's fair. I, I tend to be in the same camp. Do, do, do you geek and nerd out on something? Fantastic. I'm a fan of yours, you know. Mm-hmm. All right. So a little bit of a change of pace. Favorite Gaming food. Gaming food. Gaming that, food. Like, are we talking about like Mountain Dew and Cheetos, like that kind of like, like, or like a food in a game? Like, what, what do you mean? Gaming? No, 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 no. It's the Mountain of Cheetos. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think I gotta go with Strega on that one. I, I, I think it's gotta be pizza. Like, you know, when 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 we would when we would have in person. D and D games, or Shadowrun, or Earth Dawn, or Call of Cthulhu, or whatever it may be. Yeah, I know we would like because we would we were getting together at a home, we're able to make food. But I don't know. Every time we'd order pizza, that'd be that'd be the way to go. And actually, to tell you the truth, when I was younger, and I would um, go to you know I, you know back in you know either high school or college, and I'd go to friends' houses for like LAN parties or or like console gaming parties. Pizza was always the way to go. Um, I never was one of those stereotypical Mountain Dew like drinkers like from back in the day. Like that was a big thing. Like you'd get a big two liter of Mountain Dew and like chips or something. I don't know. I, I didn't. I was never a big fan of that kind of stuff. So, so everyone had, by the way, has a little bit of context here too. Um, Jack and I, um, are in a in a fortunate position to have some real life friends that we. Pre COVID, we'd get together with every two weeks and we actually take it in turns to cook for each other on gaming day. And like every single person in the group is a really good cook, so we actually wouldn't get pizza that much because people would be coming with like like complete meals, like three course meals and stuff. And it was really good. And they'd hang out in the kitchen, we're playing a game, they'd cook some food, we'd eat brilliantly. And so, I think for me. I mean, while I've got a soft spot for the junk food that you eat during the day, you know, when you got your nachos and that stupid melted cheese that comes in a jar and you heat it up in the microwave. Oh, I do. I'll eat that shit all day long. I think for me, it was actually when one of our number cooked a British breakfast. Full on. Tomatoes, beans, fried toast, sausages, fried tomatoes, you name it, it was on the plate, and it yeah. was so good. Yeah, it was recreated, so good. He recreated the traditional English breakfast. He recreated the traditional English breakfast, and to this day, I want to eat that again. And then another friend actually does a really mean homemade pot pie. A chicken pot pie, homemade, and that is all oh, my mouth's watering. So if I'm going to talk gaming food myself, I'm, I'm gonna point at those two and go, yeah, I want more of that. They're never gonna watch the rerun, but just in case, to get the signal out there, James and Dave, we need English breakfast and homemade pot pies stat. Yeah. Good, good times. Good times and good food. All right. So, gaming drink, then. Um, gaming drink, I. You know, that's kind of one of those things. I mean, when, you know, when you and I first met over a decade ago, my gaming drink was just Diet Coke. You know, I would bring a 12 pack, I would bring a, a bo- you know, a 12 pack box to the game. And typically by the end of the evening, that 12 pack was gone. Um, you know, cause we'd be, we'd be sitting there playing from anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. Cause 
we were crazy people back then. Um, when I was younger, I mean, like I said, I had friends that did the whole Mountain Dew thing. Um, not super, super not a fan of that. I did, you know, I did consume um, a bottle of red wine on occasion on gaming nights or would do or would do the beer thing. Typically, you know, Guinness or actually I used to drink Arrogant Bastard uh, ale. Ale? No, Arrogant Bastard it, beer. I don't know what the hell. I don't even know what it would classify it as. It was, it's I think it's an that, ale. I think it's an ale. It can, it can, whatever, it, whatever the hell it was, it would peel paint off a damn wall. That stuff. It's one of those things where the back of the bottle says you are not worthy. And then it goes it, through like a paragraph telling you why you're not worthy to drink it. You should just put it back on the shelf. I used to laugh at that as I would drink it. But now, sadly, because my palate's changed, I can't, I can't drink, I can't drink it anymore. I am not worthy of arrogant bastard, sadly. Oh, uh, uh, Jeff uh, uh, Bashman confirms that it's a dark stout ale. And Bashman would know. Bashman would know. <laughs> you know, some of my highlights drinking at the table um, was my IPA period. Actually, mm -hmm. sitting down with just a selection of IPAs. Uh, Portland, by the way, if you don't know, it is like one of the microbrewery centers of the country, uh, if not the world. We're, like per capita, we have so many microbrewers, and they all seem to do IPAs, but different ones. So actually experimenting with different IPAs while sitting with my friends gaming, that that was a, that's a that's a highlight for me. And I don't drink IPAs anymore, which is kind of weird because they were like part of my life for years. But that, that is maybe a highlight. If I had to save a favorite drink, it would be the one I actually don't drink anymore. Nice. A couple of, of acknowledgements from uh, people in the chat. Let's see. Peck said brisk tea. Alex okay. was in uh, coffee. Uh, uh, Strega says that it used to be Pepsi back in the day. Uh, Wargaming Recon says single malt. Hell yeah. Uh, Sprite Zero or water. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Strega says that um, she also loves uh, orange soda, but it's a rare indulgence, so. They're all good drinks. They're all good drinks. Coffee, you know, funny you should mention coffee there, too. Yeah, it's, the, it, it, it's one of those drinks where, um, yeah, it was like, who, who the hell would mention that, right? But it's one of the highlights in our particular gaming group. Where it's like, who wants coffee? You know, around 5.30 or something. And everyone's like, oh, me, 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 me. You go off and make a pot of fresh coffee. It's like, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. It would always be, you know, we'd have our, our colas and beers throughout the day. Then we'd hit coffee. And always after coffee, it would then be, does anybody want a glass of whiskey? And then that was then. Oh, we've got links to the um, Arrogant Bastard um, uh, back text. Okay, do you want to read it out? Oh, yes. All right, sure, I'll read it out. Uh, <laughs> arrogant bastard. Arrogance, noun. The act or quality of being arrogant, haughty, undue assumption, overbearing conceit. Oh, Jesus, it's a big, it's a big thing. Arrogant bastard ale. This is an aggressive ale. You probably won't like it. It is <laughs> quite doubtful that you have the taste or sophistication to be able to appreciate an ale of this quality and depth. We would suggest you stick to safer and more familiar territory. Maybe something with, with a multi-million dollar campaign ad convince uh, uh, a, a, a multi-million dollar ad campaign aimed at convincing you that it's made by a little brewery, or one that implies that their tasteless fizzy yellow beer will give you more sex appeal. Perhaps you think multi-million dollar ad campaigns make a beer taste better. Perhaps you are mouthing your words as you read this. And because it's the, um, the, the, the special, like, you know, um, it's a special link for the Oaked Arrogant Ale that goes on to continue um, talking about their updated brand. But yeah, that first bit, I always, I loved that. I thought that was so funny. I was like, you know what? These guys are basically saying, uh, screw you, our beer's too good for you. Fuck off. And B2 or C2? What's B2 and C2? What's B2 or C2, Wargaming? It 
might have been the link that they posted. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's it's uh, basically how do you drink your coffee? Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Oh God, B two or C two? Are you kidding me right well, now? Well, what's B two C two? Oh, those are like, you remember when what accidentally happened with my coffee this morning? That's a B two. That's a C two right there. It, it's real. It's real milky, milky, milky coffee. Oh yeah, I would have to say D four all the time, and of course Alyssa is F six. Am I? Is that link? Uh, no, F six is is black coffee. It's the that can't be the most extreme now, an yeah, F6. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, because then, then you've got, like, you know, your espressos and stuff, which is black, but even more, and I don't drink them. I like it black done. Right, right. Okay, so this particular chart, you're an F6. All right, all right. Um, it's just black coffee because it's it's a it's a creamer it's a creamer to coffee ratio. That's what it is. Gotcha. That, that's what it, A1 is basically a glass of milk. And then F6 is a cup of coffee, black. Right. So and, and then everything else is in between. So yeah, definitely D, D4 for me all the way. So Princess Strager actually had a question for you on Star Wars. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Lore of the Force. Um, I... Uh, lore of the Force. I know a little bit about the lore force but as far as a, a, a movie seeing the origins of it yeah that would be interesting because if you think about it the force is you know it, it it's not it, it it wasn't it's not it's not like it was artificially created by anything. well it's little mesolorians right or whatever they're called midichlorians and yeah no 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 what like little doing? things it, they, they cover that in the prequels yeah they, 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 they literally they, cover the law in they, the prequels they, it's canon yes just so everybody knows, Alyssa likes teasing me about uh, certain things that were brought up that not all Star Wars fans are a fan of. Are a fan of. Um, yes, <laughs> Pex goes, no, you said the bad word. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, uh, Brian's got a point, uh, Strega. In the Clone Wars, they, they bring up a lot of stuff with uh, the origin of the Force. There's actually, and Rebels touches on it a little bit, especially like with the episode of The World Between Worlds when Ezra um, finds the, 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 the ruins with the motif of the three, the, the, the father, the daughter, and the son. Um, uh, so yeah, the force, being that the force is not, obviously it's not generated by anything. It's not like there's something out there that um, like necessarily creates it aside from life. Because the force is, it's kind of like, um, what's um, like uh, what's the what's the disney movie uh with the colors of the wind uh, pocahontas it's like you know it's like it's it's everywhere it's in everything um you know it's in the it's, and yoda even says it in empire strikes back it's the tree it's the rock it's the space between it's you know it's everything it's the best of uh, the even, even even the ship well yeah and that's you know L lucas started kind of going off the rails when he was trying to bring up like stuff on a microscopic level he actually you, there's interviews with him where he wanted to talk about going into literally microscopic levels of the midichlorians and like almost creating like a, a, a movie about the biology of it, it, it was it was freaking weird um but yeah the, uh, the 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 nature of the force and everything is, is 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 definitely an interesting topic um i'm i'm kind of sad what in the in the in the sequel trilogy what they did um with uh, with the force in regards to especially the, the last film the rise of skywalker um, because um, if you think about it, um, uh, the Last Jedi even almost started to do it. Um, they started talking about the you know aspects of the Force and everything, and how it can be you know it's not it's not a bloodline, it's not a lineage or anything like that. It's like anybody can be it. But the Force, in, in a weird way, is kind of like a it 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 it, it tries to create balance itself. Um, Anyways, it's, it's a whole thing. But yes, I, I do know a little bit about it. If you ever have any questions about it, you can ask me and I might I do my best to answer it. But yes, I agree. There should be, the, I would love to see a show or something that explores more into the nuances of the Force without the weird biology, midichlorian stuff. So I'm glad, I'm, I, I'm so happy that uh, Rise of Skywalker spoke to you on, on, on those levels. That's that's brilliant. I'm, I, I actually hold that film pretty high in in, in my ranking of the Star Wars films. Um, I, I wish, all in all, I wish the sequel trilogy had gone a different direction. Um, but that's just me with my high expectations, because obviously we had we had, had such a long period of time to think about what could have come next. Um, but I, I loved it for what it was. Um, 
I loved it for what it was. It, it, it didn't give me the story that I necessarily wanted, but it's the story we have. And for what we have, I think it's great, personally. So, oh, I'm, I'm glad. Oh, that's hearing that it's your favorite. That actually makes me really happy. That's so awesome. Oh, nice, Alex. I'll have to, I'll have to look into that. Interesting. The holiday special said the magnificent pets. I'm pretty <laughs> sure yeah, Hamill himself would disagree with that. No, he actually wouldn't. He would. He would agree with you. <laughs> uh, the holiday special is, is pretty is pretty painful. It, it's it's pretty painful to watch. Um, oh man, it, it's. I mean, I do like though that because it's it wasn't considered canon um, for a long time, but. Obviously, in, in the, the holiday special, they're trying to get Chewbacca home for Life Day. Well, Life Day is now canon. In the first episode of The Mandalorian, that guy that he captures, he's t the guy talks about going home for Life Day. And it's like, holy crap, are you kidding me? Life Day is now, it's now canon because of, uh, because of everything? I just think that's hilarious. Marlin's Girl 93, no. That dance that Chewy Kid does is something else, isn't it? Marlin's Girl, nope. <laughs> nope. No. no, it's so, it's so bad. With Yeah, they, they've got the, it's like they're watching like this weird VR with the freaking, it's so, that, it just, it's, it's so bad. Holiday special is so bad. Like, short response, nope. <laughs> nope. And it's funny, Lobaka, the yeah, in the there is Dovis. Lobaka's actually now, if I'm not mistaken, they reintroduced him as canon, if I'm not mistaken, in the um it's in the um no not Lobaka. No, hold on. Cause Lobaka was his nephew. Um it was his son is um no, it wasn't Lobaka, it was um Oh no, um it's um shoot. What the hell is Chewbacca's kid's name? Shoot. That's a weird name. Lumpy. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Hey, nice um, one, Brian. Good one. Lumpy and Wargame roll over it. Yeah, it's uh, 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 Lumpo Waru, also known as either Waru or Lumpy. That's um, that's Chewbacca's kid. It was uh, Lumpy was basically was brought back into canon with the Aftermath trilogy. I think it's the second book. Chewie goes back home, um, or he, um, yeah, they, they basically go and they liberate uh, Kashyyyk from the remnants of the Empire. Yeah, Lobaka was the young from the Young Jedi books. Yeah, he was friends with the with the Solo twins, and um, what's her name with one arm and the Rancor tooth. Lightsaber. I don't remember her name. Holy crap! It's been a, it's been twenty five years since I've read those. Twenty years? How long has it been? Holy smoly! Young Jedi books are something I haven't thought about in a while. Yeah, he man. Now there's a name I haven't heard in a long time. We've totally derailed your show, Alyssa. I'm so sorry. No, it's no, no. <laughs> this is what we do on Mondays. We hang out with chill. Um, we talk about the the hobby and the passions and the things that we love so much. No, this is what we're doing. Because all I'm doing right now is just inking in general shapes. This is the perfect time for me to be dicking about over here while we talk about awesome fucking things. It's all good. So, Strega, as far as Masters of the Universe, uh, He-Man uh, and all that jazz, and um, isn't She-Ra part of the Masters of the Universe franchise? Um, I... The last time I saw anything regarding the Masters of the Universe, I was single digits and I was yay tall. Um, I actually used to have action figures. Um, I used to have, I had Battle Cats, and I think we had a He-Man, and I think we had, um, what was the guy with the fist? Fisto, whatever the hell his name was. Um, the guy with the, he wrote, he, he, the action figure, you could actually wrote, he was spring, spring, springs in his torso, so you'd twist him, and he would spring back and punch out with his, uh, with his thing. But aside from that, aside from when I was a, a, a really young, really young kid, I, I've never Fister. Fister? Fister. His name was Fister. Um, That's a terrible name. I agree. Um, 
but no, I, I haven't watched or even thought about it in, in, in that many years, you know, um, sadly. So I don't really have an opinion, um, sadly. Um, it was Fisto. Thank you, Alex. Brian, trying to take us down the wrong path. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really have an opinion, and I haven't seen the new, the new Shira on, on. I think it's on Netflix. I, I heard it's great. I heard it's amazing. I, I just haven't watched it. It's just been, it's never been. And I know that um, Kevin Smith is doing um, an animated Master of the Universe that I think, I don't think it's coming out this year. It might be coming out next year. Um, but he's doing, um, he's doing a Masters of the Universe. I don't, I don't think it's a reboot. I think it's supposed to be a continuation. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I, I so I, I don't know much about it. Um, that's great. That's awesome. I love that um, the new Shira is um, is inclusive like that. That's that's awesome. As as it and everything else should be, um, in my in my opinion, personally. Um, oh, and the Shira is a reboot. Okay. Which one is that? Is that the um, so Canadian horror movie? So we've got either Tusk or that's, that's got to be Tusk, right? Or is it Yoga Hosers? Which uh, see, I was I was watching I was reading I was watching an interview with um. Kevin Smith and Mark Bernard and the two obviously the two of them are doing Master Universe. I, I didn't I didn't think that it was gonna be a reboot. I thought it was I thought it was gonna be a continuation. If it is a reboot, okay, hopefully they do it well. Hopefully they don't they don't screw anything up. But Alyssa, how is the map going? The map is going magnificently in a here's a whole bunch of gray lines as I sketch and black lines as I ink in over it. It's taking shape. It's definitely taking shape. I don't do cutaways that often, so this is definitely an exercise for me on perspective and everything. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm digging it. I, I really am. I'm glad I dropped in these little characters here for a sense of scale. Mr. Amphora guy, I freaking love him. Um, but it's definitely it's taking shape, um, without a doubt. And I started adding a little bit of brickwork at the bottom just so we could sort of see what that would look like. I, th I think it's going to rock. I think it's going to be a real nice map. But I do think it's going to be a little bit of a tough one for me to do. We just... we got to keep doing it, right? we got to keep doing things like this and get better and better and better at it. Right, exactly. Exactly. There's definitely, there's definitely some perspective things here for me to learn. Without a doubt. Hey, Princess Dragon, thank you so much. The, uh, the compliment helps... Helps my confidence in what we're doing here. I, th I think it's going to be a nice quarter panel map and a little cutout like this. So we've got people talking to each other, someone working down below, someone bringing in the amphora. Uh, uh, Brock's almost doubtlessly never had a Roman, by the way, but I drew a whole bunch of Romans in this thing because that's what we do here in the Baden Channel. All right, so another question. Um, I'm going to ask this one, Jack. But this is not a version war, because everyone keep in mind what Jack just said. As long as you're geek and nerd on something, as long as you're passionate about something gaming orientated, then you are cool and it doesn't matter what it is. So, favorite gaming system. Oh, gaming or system. Or systems. <clears throat> oh, I appreciate that, Alex. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Um, so, say favorite gaming systems. I gotta say that the, the currently the ones that um, that we play. I want to say I like um, I like um, Call of Cthulhu and that style of game. That that percentage, you know, style. Um, I'm I mm, you know it's funny. I I like Shadowrun as a campaign setting. I don't think I necessarily like the rules. Mm. So I'm gonna not say that one, which is funny because I do love role playing in Shadowrun. As a matter of fact, last night I was doing some writing and some brainstorming for our ongoing Shadowrun campaign. Um, 
No, but I think that's fair. I think that's a really good observation that you're making because it's not just about like the the setting, right? You you clearly love the setting of Shadowrun, but the rule system as written kind of clunky. Right. right. And like one of the things that obviously Cthulhu has going for it is the the rule system's okay, and then but it, obviously then it's the, the the mythos behind it that's 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 then the stories that come from it that are great. Because if you think about it, that. Um, uh, I, I forget what the name of the system now is, that that is called with um, um, for um, for Shadowrun or not Shadowrun for Call of Cthulhu. Um, it's that um, oh I've got it over here. It's um, I forget what it is. The, that 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 style of percentage system. We've actually played a couple of other games using that system. Um, not a fan, and I'm wondering if it's you know if Cthulhu the the stories and the the, the game aspect of it has actually helped beat that out. So. Cthulhu, definitely in there, but it, again, it might be biased because of the storytelling. Um, I had a lot of fun with um, Deadlands. That was a really fun system. Um, loved Deadlands. Loved Deadlands. Deadlands loved me, too. And to tell you the truth, I, I really dig the D20-ish stuff. So, uh, like, D&D uh, &D 5th Edition, I've been really digging. And before it got crazy complex with um, all the additional stuff, I was a big fan of like third edition 3.5 Pathfinder. Uh, before it became just a, you know, splat slog, um, I used to really dig that. Um, I don't know, it's, and it was simple and I know it was flawed, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. You know, sadly, I've never played. I've never played GURPS. I've never played Rifts. Oh, you know what? I played GURPS once. I at that convention we were at. I'm not not a super fan of that. Um, we, we played GURPS. Was that the zombie one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, I think okay. that was the zombie one. wasn't wasn't a super fan of that. But that might have been again the experience because the game wasn't wasn't brilliant. I've only played Traveler that one time, and it was okay. I like. I think I like the the, the whole aspect of character creation in Traveler more. Um, I've always wanted to try, and you know, the, 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 the D6, you know, West End Games Star Wars system was fine. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't, I just liked it because it was Star Wars. I do want to try the Fantasy Flight Star Wars system, though. I have the dice and the rules for it. We just haven't played it. So I want to say, yeah, I want to say D20 asterisk, uh, Deadlands, and then Call of Cthulhu asterisk, personally. What about you, Alyssa? You know, it's, it's funny you know, listening to you talk. Um, I think... I think, in all fairness, like, and I'm going to answer the question about systems that I like, but I think also your enjoyability, is that a word it is now, of a system can at least be partly driven by how the game is run, right? It's like you run a great Shadowrun game, but you keep things moving. Now, Shadowrun is a very crunchy system, but my experience with you is more positive than, let's say, if I went to a convention game and experienced the same thing. We've been to convention games a lot. We've had some great experiences. And I think that helps, like, endear you to a particular system. But we've also been in some poorly run games, let's just say. And I think that can actually put a little notch against a system you'll go because eh, you don't get to experience the joy of it you know I, I think that's part of it and i think i think you've had a positive call of cthulhu experience just because of the, let's say the way i run my call of cthulhu's uh, but the, the, that system is nice and it lends itself to the storytelling that call of cthulhu needs and i think that's a good system because of it i also like deadlands and a lot of people hate Explody Dice. They hate them with a passion. I actually like Explody Dice. And I like the way that the Deadland system ran. And the, the way and how easy it was to create a character. And that wasn't even with a particularly brilliant GM. He was a good GM. But the, the, the overall, it just, like, it, it just worked. It worked for me. I, I liked it. I think Deadlands has got to be one of my favorites. That and Call of Cthulhu. Nice. Brian McWhorter, uh, biased against games with funky dice symbols. Eh? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, because uh, he was saying how the D6, uh, the West End game Star Wars is the best Star Wars, but then he said, but he's biased against games with funky dice symbols because the Fantasy Flight ones, they, I mean, they had to print their own dice because they have funky symbols on them. 
who knows what the hell they means. Um, yeah, that's what it was, um, Strega. Thank you. Yeah, basic role playing system is the the basic role playing game system is the is what Cthulhu came off of. Which actually, I think Cthulhu came first, I think, and then they kind of broke it down. Was it Cthulhu like, or was it RuneQuest? Oh, you know what? It might have been RuneQuest that did it first. Yeah, because that's 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 the same system as well. They both use that. I've never actually played a RuneQuest game. So that would be... See, know. RuneQuest is fun. RuneQuest is fun if you want to experience, like, feeling like any combat you get into could be deadly. Like, you do not pull your sword out unless you know you're going to win this thing unless you feel really confident if you've got a skill of 60 percent with sword and 40 percent with block okay you better think twice if you're going to pull this weapon out because even a peasant with a cultural could give you a little bit of a working over he gets that low roll you don't get the block he does a hellacious amount of damage and your skull's caved in it is a brutal system but if you're in the mood for brutal it works really well. Almost sounds like it'd be a great con game, you know? Because I could think it be, could. It could be like, and in two hours, well, you're dead. <laughs> All right. And the expanse. So Green Loon Tune, we own the expanse. I haven't even cracked it open. I've got to be honest with you. Yeah, I think it's still in shrink wrap on the shelf behind it. It might well, might well be. Well, not on the shelf. Your guys' perspective, my perspective, it's behind it. I have a different. All right, so, by the way, it's a time check. We're an hour in. We're going to go for another 30 minutes. Um, do, you, do you need, I can do an exclamation point wine if you'd like. Yes, or, I or do. I can, or I can simply ask you, do you need a drink? I need a drink. And I'm going to ask this question for you to think about it. And I want to hear everyone's answer in the chat. And I'm going to tell you mine. Favorite Game of Thrones character. All right, chat. Game of Thrones, your favorite character. I'm drawing like a right wazzock here, by the way. I acknowledge this. I'm trying to get a sense of what angle I want to do here, and I think it's going to be something like this. Which means we don't need this. Do the end credits count? Yeah, you can have the end credits, you heathen. And actually, you know what? I'm not even sure I agree with you. Because while I feel that the last two seasons weren't as strong as the earlier seasons, and there were a lot of holes. There were a lot of holes. The minute you start getting into battles and magic and dragons, and you've got a kid that could just, like, see anywhere anytime but apparently he's not gonna be able to scout shit out it, 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 I, I, I start i start out questions i'm not gonna lie to you but is it the prince of dawn jack did, did i get that right mr flipping flip guy yes. he, prince pedro, of dawn yeah, pedro, pascal, uh... pedro pascal prince of dawn that guy and he was in the show for all of, what, two minutes? I love that character. Now, I love the Hound, too. I love the Hound. Oberyn Martell is the character. Oberyn Martell. Oberyn Martell. I loved Oberyn Martell quite a bit. And I loved the Hound. But I loved the Hound and his relationship with... What, what's her name? Arya? Arya, yeah. Um, that... And I've played a lot of characters, actually, that have been a little Arya-like. I'm just, I'm just going to admit that right now. Uh, but the scene where they're in the tavern and it's all about chickens. It's like, are you going to die for a fucking chicken? Someone is. That whole scene, from start to finish, I've watched it, I swear, dozens of times. I love it. Him and Arya. I, I, the, the, that, they may be on my favorite characters, but it has to be a duo. It has to be a duo. Yeah, Oberyn, Oberyn Martell is definitely a pretty fierce contender, um, for sure. Gosh, now that you've put that in my head, is there anybody that's better? 
because I was when I was when I was walking away very cockily saying, "Oh, that's easy." I it was I was thinking um, Arya, but then I because I totally forgot about Oberyn. Um, he oh, and yeah, with a close second to Tyrion, but he is uh, starting definitely with Tim, Tyrion. Definitely a brilliant character, without a doubt. Ah, uh, Pex, yes, Sirio Pharrell, so sad. Okay, spoilers. So sad he didn't make it out of the first season. Um, I was so hoping he would one day show up again. And like, because you never, you don't, if you mm. don't see someone die on screen, there's always a chance that they could come back. I was hoping he would. I really was. Me too. I was hoping she would have made it. Like she's, she's following the faceless man and was begun to, she was becoming an assassin. I was so hoping he would just pop up and be like, oh, by the way, I, I'm, I'm one of them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, 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 what's her name? Um, Brienne of Tarth was pretty cool. I really dug her. Yeah, Brienne of Tarth was, it was neat. She had an interesting story arc, I felt. The whole, like, relationship between her and Jamie. Read my last line, let's see. Okay, bad games. Oh, top secret name because that pulled me so aimed. <laughs> hey, don't jump <laughs> quite ahead on the questions here. We've got no, bad he games, so, but no, we can do bad games. Oh, we do can do bad games. So he, he he was commenting on how bad games for me it was top secret mainly because at the time I pulled a pistol aimed at the right at the back of the head of an NPC, had a bad roll, and shot him his own self in the foot. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um. Ah, uh, yes, the Onion Knight was a good one. Yeah, I definitely got to go. I, I I think I'm going to have to go over it with you. Um, Pedro Pascal, in my opinion, brought that character to life. It's just sad because in the show, he was the only character of Dorne to really get a lot of attention. Sure, the 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 his daughters, the Vipers, kind of came in later. And you see his brother, the, the King of Dorne who they really they really crapped on that on that storyline which sucks um from the books i mean not that i i i don't try to be a book snob but when a book is so good and you can see i can totally see how you would translate this to the screen and they don't even try or they try kind of and it just it's like you could have done something awesome with this but you decided not to and you went a completely different direction and it just over and over and all the way he was he was perfect and now he's the mandalorian well one of the three people doing the mandalorian oh alex is sitting over in the corner with ghost nothing wrong with ghost and that was one of the things that i think featured uh, more uh, prominently in the books jack correct me if i'm wrong than the show like mm. the all of those wolves the dire wolves yeah. the dire wolves like, they were a big part of the books, and I felt, it, and I've not read the books, okay, I'm not claiming I have, but to me, watching the show, after I want to say season two, maybe three, maybe, it felt like they were just pushed to one side, like they just didn't want to deal with the cost of the CGI. I was going to say, the, the, the joke was that they ran out of their CGI budget for the dragons, so they couldn't, they couldn't, they didn't have any CGI left for the wolves. And I felt like they could have been a huge part of it, and could have been a fun part of it, according to what you've told me, how they feature in the books. Mm -hmm. Now, Strega has a question, but if it's going to be... Um, if it's gonna be a question that comes up later in your questions list, I won't answer it yet. But she wants to know what's our favorite published campaign setting. It's not in there. Go for it's, it. So, favorite campaign settings. Well, and she wants to know yours as well. So, um, well, and so for me, I, honestly, it's like very difficult. No, it's not. Let me answer in two parts. It's very difficult because I've always written my own campaign settings right from the beginning. I never got into Greyhawk. I never got into... I, I like Dragonlance. I like Dragonlance quite a bit. But we never really played in Dragonlance. And so I never got into campaign settings. Now, if I can pick Cthulhu as a campaign setting, it wins. Hands down. And I don't care what system we're playing. If we're in the Cthulhu lore, if we're allowed to do that, then I'm going to do that. If I'm not allowed to do that, then I'm going to pick Ravenloft. Ravenloft is my campaign setting. And one of the reasons for that is 
it speaks to me. I love the setting. I love the vibe. I love I love the 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 um. I, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. But I, I love the ambience of Ravenloft quite a bit. It agrees with me as a GM. Like, uh, so as a GM, if I picked up a, a pre-written scenario and ran it, my players would know that I was working off a pre-written scenario. It didn't have my voice. But I could pick up a Ravenloft scenario and run that. And no one knew the difference. They didn't actually know I was running off a scenario. So if anything, my voice is really in sync with Ravenloft, like a huge amount. So I picked Ravenloft as a setting. That's mine. Nice, nice. If I was allowed to do one akin to yours, like a Call of Cthulhu, uh, mine would be Shadowrun, the whole cyberpunk with magic. That's That would be my favorite type of setting. Cyber, cyberpunk, futuristic cyberpunk um, with, with, with magic. Um, but if I was going to do one of the more traditional settings, like the, the Ravenlofts or the, the, those types of things, um, I'd probably have to do uh, Legend of the Five Rings, but specifically during the first uh, Clan War um, era. Um, I know it was a card game first, but then they did do the role-playing game. Um, but it would be that. It would be that. And Zombie, no, I will admit I have not read yours yet. But that also leaves plenty of room for yours being my favourite. But no, I haven't. I'm not going to lie to you, my friend. Green Loom Tomb, Dragonlance. Dragonlance has got a lot to go for. I mean, I've got to be honest with you. I was a little bit of a snob with campaign settings. Like, I just, I never had an interest in actually reading anyone's campaign setting. And it was the artwork, I think, originally of Dragonlance that made me go, what is this? What, it, that was Elmore, right? And I was like, what, what is this? And I found myself playing Dragonlance and enjoying Dragonlance quite a bit. Quite a bit. Uh, Dragonlance would be, you know, it, it's in the top five for me. Maybe top three, without a doubt. Funnily enough, you mentioned that, uh, that it was kind of Elmore's artwork that kind of got you into it originally. Funnily enough, for me, with um, the Forgotten Realms, specifically the um, the Northwest region, Icewind Dale and Waterdeep and all that with the Dark Elf books, it was Todd Lockwood's art for, I want to say it was, um, it was, it was one of the later ones um, because I had never read them all. I'd never read any of them. And suddenly I saw this piece of Dritz the Dark Elf. This, I mean, Todd Lockwood is a, is a brilliant artist in and of himself with anything he does. But this piece that he did was so beautiful. It was so, it, it sparked all of my fantasy D&D, like, you know, thoughts going. And I was like, what the hell is this? And I was like, oh, this is book 13 or 27 or 82 of this Dark Elf series. I gotta go back and now read all these. And I read them from the beginning. I went, they, they had these great collected volumes where they would have, because each, each each of the books was actually kind of like a trilogy. So it was like this trilogy followed by this trilogy followed by this trilogy, but they were all following the characters and they were all in chronological order. So I, I read them all and holy scamoly. I mean, I, I stopped reading them at a certain point because um, sadly, a lot of the main characters had died off because um, they were all in the books it's like they're humans and there's halflings and their stuff and I was like well if, at the point the main character is an elf you're gonna have friends die over the years so that's kind of what happens because you know 90 years just went by in the books and all your friends are dead so what are you gonna do about it um, so when this, a lot of the main characters started dying off I was kind of like alright that's cool that's cool uh, yes yes R.A. Salvatore did indeed hit Chewy with a moon, sadly. Um, but what can you do? Um, the, the beginning of the end, in my opinion, with the Yuzum Vong books, so Star Wars books will be it. Um, but yeah, but the, the exact same thing with you. Saw this piece of art, and I was like, what is this setting? I want to know more about this. And I think I think that's the power of artwork, right? Without a doubt. Yeah. Princess, how did you get into uh, Waterdeep? What was it that drew you in? Was it the artwork? Was it something else? I 
I do think Brian uh, Chewie went down punching at the moon. I do think that is true. It's Chewie, for God's sakes. All right, so... I'm gonna I'm gonna skip I'm gonna I'm gonna skip some questions here as we're yeah. coming into the ne next ten minutes here. I kind of like how it's kind of organic. So yeah, go for it. Go for um, it. And we're gonna definitely come back to the questions, but I want to know your favorite and best role playing experience or just gaming experience. <laughs> Alexander writes 91. Thank you very much for the follow. That is extremely appreciated. Greetings. Alexander writes. Hello. Um, let's see. Green Lantern, I will not follow the script, sir. I will not. No, I'm going to bounce around all over the place. Whenever it's a show and a script, get out of here. All right, so favourites. So, and, and, and the reason why I'm asking this one, because it has a counterpart. So your favorite gaming moment, any game, I don't care if it's a board game, a role-playing game, a computer game, give me mm, one yes. of your highlight gaming experiences. And maybe yes. in a future channel, we'll, uh, a future show, we'll open this up to different types of gaming experiences, but give me a favorite gaming experience. Yeah, um, that's actually a good, that's actually a good thing because, because if you had to, yeah, that would definitely have to have subcategories. That's like, what's your favorite film? Well, maybe ask me what my favorite comedy is. Ask me what my favorite horror film is. You can't just say, what is your one favorite movie of all time? Because films are so different. But for me personally, that, that would be my response. So favorite gaming experience would definitely be a, okay, so what are we talking about? Are we talking about a gaming experience when I was running a game, when I was playing a game? Was it a video game experience? That type of thing. Um, I gotta, I gotta say, and, and this is, mm, this is gonna sound weird because it's such a it was such a weird um, moment but um there's there's a type of there's a style of game uh for uh for uh, for a computer game um it's a, it's like a narrative it's like a story based game uh some of them that i've played are have been the wolf among us um there was uh the, the tales from the borderlands um, the Walking Dead games, that type of thing. So I have to say it's probably a two-way tie uh, between Life is Strange um, and the very first Walking Dead game. Um, and again, this is I'm, I'm answering this from a asterisk computer gaming. Okay, um, and we'll, we'll, we're definitely going to hit on the other subjects. What, though, put them into the category of favorite for you i think it had to do with the writing and the acting um people who say that voice acting is an acting are ridiculous um the uh, the amount of emotion and weight that um is it, that they, they, these actors if in a way they actually have it even harder because they have to convey because they, they don't know necessarily what the final product is going to be they don't have they're, they're not able to, to see it necessarily right in front of them so they have to convey so much emotion and so much so much power just purely based on their voice and so for both for both life is strange and and uh, the, the first season of the walking dead it was the it was the writing and the acting was so powerful and so beautiful and both of them are tragic um they both i mean neither game makes you like leave it going well that was a fun experience let's do that again i was so emotionally drained from both of those games but in a but weirdly in a in a in a, in a good way both of them and, and i am i am man enough to admit this i was bawling my eyes out at the end of both of those both of those games and they're completely different games they're not connected in any way they're, they're just two separate games life uh, life is strange and and the the walking dead um telltale games the walking dead first season um and they were just be because by the end of the game you had been especially with um with both of those because i, I played them when they were completed and so i had the entire like the entire game um as, as a whole while i know for other people that played it as it was coming out they came out episodically like they'd play episode one and then they'd have to wait like three or four months or six months and then episode two and then they'd have to wait like two or three months and they'd get episode three so 
over all of this time, you get to know these characters. You, you they, they become your friends. They become your family. You get so invested in them. Maybe even you see some of yourself in them because the, the, the stories were written so well that they felt like real people. It was such good writing. And they were kind of like slice of life. Yes, one of them takes place in a zombie apocalypse. And yes, one of them is about a girl who can change, who can turn back time, um, which is kind of a cool concept. Um, but you get to you get to know the characters so well and the stories are written so well and by the end of them the stories go where they need to go and it, it, none of it felt contrived it felt like this is what would happen this is what the course of events would come and it was just it was they were so beautiful and to this day those might be my favorite now again computer gaming memorable gaming experiences would be those games 100% hands down i don't know if i've had or had anything that powerful in a computer gaming experience before um before those two i don't think that's a good answer i think that's a good answer and i think we're definitely going to come back to this we're going to talk just about our top moments um several people in the chat have already given us some great ones like pex going into a game store for the first and discovering all the things i didn't know about for the first time i uh, pex i feel you I went, there was a store in Liverpool, England, that sold miniatures in the basement. And you would go downstairs and they had the walls lined with minis in glass cabinets. And you would, and I'm talking 83, 84, early days, you know. And you would go with a little bit of pen and paper and you'd write down the code numbers of what the one you wanted. And you'd hand them to the guy and he'd pull them out of little drawers behind him and hand them across. An incredible experience. I get you. Princess Strega. Favorite experience. I was being GM'd by someone uh, on the D&D 3E. Asked the GM if I could tap into magical supernatural ability to make a jump. He denied it. However, that moment inspired me to write a variant of the monk class. It's one of those things where it's like your game influences future things. So, Princess, I feel you on that one. That's really cool. Brian, I think they were like the... Um... Uh, the the bugs I think they were the bugs the, the VW bugs that was the name of them yeah it, it is funny how sometimes a, a memorable gaming experience can be that it can almost be a negative one because it's you then deciding I want to make this different I want to it's such a, it like that even though it was a negative experience it was such a powerful experience that you then wanted to grow from it or expand off of it or do your own thing from it that's actually that's actually interesting. I never even thought of that possibility. Yeah, like you said, Alyssa. I mean, we have so many, so many experiences. We could have this exact same conversation where it was like, "What's a GMing experience that was most memorable to you? What was a, 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 ta a tabletop playing player moment that was more memorable to you?" Yeah, I think we could build some entire shows just around this question, couldn't we? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. All right. Well, in a similar vein, and before we um, depart for the evening, I'm going to keep nudging this map along here. Give me an example of a worst gaming moment. It could be anything. Worst gaming moment. Bad rules, bad GM, bad judgment call, bad dice rolls. A bad gaming moment. And I'll go first, okay? I'll go first. I'll give you an example of a moment that I'm not happy with in my gaming experience. We, um, we're we a roleplay heavy group. I've got some very dear friends that I've known for a long time that I play with. And I love them very dearly. And um, in character, to such an extent that it started to affect my personal relationship with one of the other players. He was making some stupid calls. OOC. That was affecting the game. So, and I'll hit save. So it was affecting, and I've been hit save as I go along, by the way. So, but it, it, he did something in game that my character, my character, was very resentful of, not appreciative at all. And I allowed that role-playing moment to affect 
how I felt about this other human being. And that's a low light for me. That was a learning, that was a learning moment for me. That because it taught me that sometimes you just gotta go, oh oh see, oh 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 oh. Do you realize if you do this how much you're gonna piss off my character? But to have a mature adult response to the situation versus actually bringing it to the real world. So that is a low light for me. That 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 happened and wasn't proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. I um have something akin to that. See a zombie. Something that's akin to that, and this is actually um, same group of friends, same situation, um, and it, it's a it's a negative gaming experience for me because it essentially was I was part of the problem, sadly, um, and it was during that time when we weren't communicating like adults about the game from an out of character perspective. Um, but and I won't get into the crazy details so everybody knows. But basically, I had a my character was trying to be more clever than he actually was and pretended to uh, side with the bad guys, shall mm. we say. And there were other situations that were going on in the real world and in the game that were causing the campaign to spiral out of control. This was a campaign that we had been running for years. Um, but I was... My actions and the fact that I did not communicate with the rest of the players out of character mind you all i had to do was out of character say hey guys this is what he's planning on doing this is what i'm planning on doing um and i didn't and it, i was i was one of the cogs in the wheel that caused that epic campaign to ultimately come to an end and fail and that character ended up dying in a in in, in because and he didn't need to sadly um he that that character didn't need to die the bad situation didn't need to get bad the dm didn't have to prep you you were the dm didn't have to do a months of prep work just to get derailed literally in a single day um and it, it just ended up being such a horrible bad experience that to this day i mean it's one of those where yes i am such a proponent of communication i am willing to break the rules quote unquote and discuss things that the characters might not know but for the sake of the integrity of the game we need to have this discussion the the do you know that your character's actions are literally about to mess things up on a campaign level i need you to be aware of this because that's that's going to be what happens yes your character might not know this but you as the player need to know this and what, what's unfortunate is there's some players that don't have the maturity to even respond to that type of thing i actually think that we have a player um, who's a friend of ours who if when confronted with that type of thing they get very defensive um even though for all uh for all other purposes they seem like they're very open to change and open to go with the flow i think they're the type of person that if they're confronted with something that like your actions are going to be disruptive i think they might actually be like okay well this is what i would do you know and almost kind of come back at us as like but that's what my character would do kind of a thing you know so it, it's it's one of those you know you know you when you, you know when you have a, a group of friends that you've been playing with for a very long time you'd think you'd be able to have those types of conversations but but some people are just wired differently sadly but yes my contribution to the downfall of a great campaign Same because time. i did not discuss what was going on with the rest of the group and where my head was at yeah, I think that's a good one. I, I, as the GM of that particular one, I think that is an excellent example. So on that note, we've been going for about an hour and 33 minutes, about, she says. I think this is a good time to end it for the evening. I, Jack, thanks for being with us. I really do appreciate you hanging out. I, I love us, this chit-chat. I love the change of pace that it brings and I think we're going to make this a recurring question. We're going to talk about a highlight and a low light in our gaming experiences. And I'm sure all of us have examples for days. Yeah, like you mentioned, it could be so... It could be so... Uh, 
Strega, let's see. Worst experience, GM house rules. Three crits kill, three crit fails affects the party. I roll three nat ones and decapitated a fellow character. Oh no. Oh no. See, ac accidentally causing another player's demise is so crappy. Oh, I can only, I can, I can only imagine. That's a low light. That's a low light right there. Thank you everybody for being here. Yes, thank you everyone. I want to thank everyone that has subscribed to me very much from the bottom of my soul. Your support not only empowers me, but it all goes back into the channel. And starting next week, you're going to see some great benefits when we have a private Discord just for you. And I want to also thank my Patreons. I've largely neglected my Patreon account for the last year with little moments of me coming up here and there throwing maps at them. That's all going to change starting next week. Pex has been hard at work, not only with goals, but rewards. Every level is right now going to feel very loved. So to my Patreons and to my subscribers, thank you so much. It's really a humbling experience to have your support. For the map that we're doing for Troll Lord Games, the Castle Keeper's Guide, we have done the Thorpe, the Hamlet, the Village, all with stupid, crazy detail. And now we're working on the block. You gotta say that, the block. And it's getting close. We're inking it in. I'm down against some of the perspective angles on this. I feel pretty good about a lot of this. It's probably going to be two more sessions this week. We're going to do Tuesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Thursday? What happened to Wednesday? I don't know. Don't ask questions. This week is block week. By the time we come out of this, we're going to be done. You've, you, you can see I'm starting to add some character details. I'm starting to add some brick details. I'm probably going to, by the way, delete these bricks. I just wanted to get a sense for how it was going to work. I think it will. I think this is going to be a great little map. It's our first cutaway. So with that said, we're back tomorrow. 5.30 Pacific Time. 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. We're going to continue the block session. And we're just going to keep on doing the ink work on this bad boy. I want to appreciate all of you hanging out with me tonight. Every single one of you. Um, like the new people and the old people. Thank you. Here on this channel, we build worlds. We create people. We give them little jobs. This is Sam. Sam is the Amphora guy. That's what we do. With that said, let's see what Sam has to do tomorrow. Everyone, have a great one. Jack, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, my dear. I love you all. See you tomorrow night. I'll see you then.